I'm here this morning with Jack Lipton. He's the co-founder of Technology Metals Research. And Jack, I know you're in China today, so thank you for coming live to uh, update us on this conference that you're at. You are located where, and can you tell us about the event you're attending right now? I'm in Ganzhou, China, which is South China. It's the center of the ionic absorption clay district. This is uh, the heavy wear earth capital of the world at the moment. I was a uh, a presenter for the seventh international conference on rare earth development and application of the Chinese Society for Rare Earths. Let me take a breath. And it's the second annual conference of the Ch uh, China Rare Earth Summit presented by the uh, Chinese Association of the China Rare Earth Industry. All that having been said, it's the total world of rare earths uh, because it's the academic research and development and the industrial world coming together. A very eye-opening conference. A lot of numbers coming out that I hadn't heard before and that I didn't think the Chinese were so anxious to uh, put out. Okay, well, with that kind of lead-in, you want to start with some of these numbers for us or uh, let us know what you're referencing? What I'm saying is that we, we've all been talking about the Chinese are, are restructuring. They're, they're condensing the industry, and we wonder, well, what's going on? You, you could tell what's going on from the chairman of the Industrial Society who gave the numbers. He said, there are currently in China, uh, in, in operation or planned to be in operation by January 2015, nearly 40 uh, solvent extraction plants just in this region, which is the provinces surrounding uh, the Jiangshai province, which is where the South China clays are. They, have a, they will have a capacity at that point of 60,000 tons of refining. Now, this is five times the official production of heavy wear, so obviously they're also able to refine other, the light wearers. But we have to keep in mind the Chinese have too much capacity. Last year, when, when I... Uh, became aware that the Chinese were consolidating the industry. I, it's called modernizing where I come from. And it, it always, it, whenever you have, uh, excuse me for being politically incorrect, whenever you have a cowboy and Indian scenario where, where one side is kicking the you-know-what out of the other and it all ends, then we all get together and make lovey-dovey, but we don't have armies anymore. So what am I talking about? The Chinese have been competing like, like the Wild West since the beginning of the rare earth age, they are they are not drones run by some faceless bureaucrat. They are very competitive businessmen. They're known all over the world, except in the United States, as very competitive businessmen. And they they are now the government stepped in, just as the U.S. government would have done a hundred years ago, and said, "Okay, guys, all these companies, illegal production, no profit, borrowing money from banks that shouldn't be lending to you. This all ends." And now they've appointed some of the largest companies in China, mining and chemical companies, to consolidate this industry, not to do the mining or the refining, to organize it and supervise, and they're setting production limits. Uh, so they have so many of these refineries and so many metal makers and so much capacity that I said, the only thing we need to do outside, I said, you fellows are going to run out of heavy wear earths. Uh, one of the uh, conference speakers disagreed with me. He said, oh, no, they're the heavy wear earths in surplus. I have to tell you the Chinese left when, when this Western person said that. The, the fact is the Chinese are predicting that even though dysprosium may be in balance by 2015, maybe, they see an extreme shortage of terbium and yttrium. So they're interested in the production of heavy wearers. China cannot, for two reasons. One, they don't have any more deposits, and they don't want to use up what they have. And the other is they don't want to strain what they've got. So the Chinese are prepared to buy heavy wearers from the outside. Now, their idea, of course, is that They'll buy ore concentrates from our favorite companies like Ucor and Rare Earth Resources, Tasman, things like that. And, of course, none of those companies can stay in business by selling ore concentrates to the Chinese. There's not enough money in it. So I said to them, 
you have to come to North America and either show us how to refine heavy wear earths or do it yourself. But we are not sending you concentrates when we to sell to you, and you can't toll them in China because your law doesn't allow it. Once the company has the material, it belongs to them. And and so when I say to you, let's be partners, we can't be partners. Um, Jack, after your last interview, I received so many emails with, okay, uh, Jack saying there's going to be a potential lift in demand. Can you talk to me about the conference and where the demand is actually going to be and where it will not be? Okay, it's not going to be in the mature economies of the world where everyone has a cell phone, everyone has a car, everyone has a television, and even though the Madison Avenue types of all these nations are trying to convince people that once you have one additional pixel on the screen, you should get a new phone. It's not working when people don't have any money or jobs. Where the demand is going to come from is the growing economies. The Chinese economy is only slowed to five times the speed of the American economy growth. That's where the demand is going to be, China, and they're going to fill Chinese domestic demand first, then India, Korea, uh, the Indonesian archipelago. This is where the demand goes. Places that no North American even can spell is, is where the future demand of a Two billion people without cell phones. Where do you think uh, the demand for cell phones is going to be? So what is the role of Canada and the United States in this? We have the best, some of the best, almost all of the best, with one or two exceptions, hard rock deposits of heavy wearers in the world. We pretend that, that the 150-ton demand of the United States military is what's driving this industry. That is really silly. What's driving this industry is consumer demand, and the majority of consumer demand is going to be in East Asia. Now, we cannot afford to mine our material if all we're selling is ore concentrates. It's too expensive to build a mine. You could never make a profit doing that. We need to go downstream and vertically integrate. Thank you very much, Jack. You You're have welcome. a safe trip.